I finally got a recording custom. Big thanks to jpbouvetmethod.com for sponsoring this video. Steve Gadd, recording custom. Carter Buford, recording custom. Dave Weckl, Lauren L. Lewis, Peter Erskine, Steve Jordan. Every drum legend you can think of has probably played a recording custom at some point. And Yamaha even says that these are the most recorded drums in history, so you know I had to see what's up with them. Got a 12 inch. Got a 14 inch. A 16 inch. And a 22. This kit came from cameraman Bryce's church, and no, he's not my dad. I was proposed with the option to trade my DW kit for this kit, but ultimately I declined because it didn't really make sense. So funny enough, they found another guy named David who has a bunch of drum sets, and they traded this kit for a Ludwig kit. Also, hi David if you're watching this. But after a while, he decided to sell it, so I bought it. And he saw that it came with cases, but it also came with a bunch of other stuff. Inside the bass drum, there's a Randall May uh, internal miking system with a Beta 52. And there's also this box of stuff. Got a triple mount for the tom arm as well as a cymbal arm. This crazy Slingerland mount, I have zero use for this thing. Another Slingerland thing. The OG Yamaha tom mount. Couple cymbal arms. Another little cymbal arm. Some old school bass drum spurs. Pretty sure this is a Slingerland mount. A Ludwig P32, I think. Couple mufflers. A DW mount. A bag of random mounts. As well as a bunch of feet. Looks like some made in Japan tension rods and a Ludwig tension rod. And finally, a whole mess of snare wires. Actually, that's not all. It also came with this snare. A newer 14 by 6 and a half Ludwig Supra. It also just occurred to me that the Ludwig Supra claims to be the most recorded snare drum in history, so the most recorded snare drum paired with the most recorded drum set has got to be a killer kit, right? But back to the kit now, I want to figure out what the deal is with recording customs. I've never played one, I've only heard good things about them, so what better way than to ask some people that actually play recording customs. I had a kit just like this. 12 by 8, 13 by 9, 16 by 16, and a 22 by 14 kick. And you might think like, those are boomer sizes, old dude sizes. Well, I'm a blues man, I play the blues. But really, these shells make them magical and allow you to do anything you could ever want. I found a set like this in hot red finish out in New Jersey on Craigslist. But I live north of Chicago, so I had to hit up my in-laws who live out that way and I said, would you please go get this drum set, meet this guy out in the parking lot and take care of this for me. So eventually I got the kit home and I fell in love immediately. There's something so special about these drums and it's because of this wood, this beautiful birch. Under microphones, they really, really shine. I mean, it's in the name, Recording Custom. And that's why I got them. Ah, uh, yes. Birch shells, stained interiors, and made in Japan. I think I can relate. We all know that Yamaha makes a lot of things, and one of those things is a piano. So the story goes that Yamaha was doing research on their pianos and woodwind instruments, which are made of birch, and they decided that birch was the perfect wood to make a drum set out of. Also, the first recording customs were only offered in this piano black finish, which you guessed it, it's the same as their pianos. So if you think about it, a recording custom is just the drum version of a Yamaha piano. Now what about the recording aspect of the recording custom? Tim talked about it a little bit, and originally these were just the YD9000 series, so Yamaha had a good reason to change the name, right? So one day, I was talking with my friend Adam Criscal, who's an amazing drummer, and we were talking about the Peter Erskine instructional video called Everything is Timekeeping. I studied with Peter for five years at USC. After that conversation with Adam, I texted Peter and I was like, hey, whatever happened to that drum set from uh, that instructional video? And he was like, you know what? I still got them. And maybe they could be for sale. And I was like, oh really? So I got them because I love Peter and I love his drumming and I love the sound of 80s 
Yamaha Recording Customs. It's on so many records that I grew up listening to and that I still love to this day. And I do a ton of recording here in this room and in my other room here at my home studio. And this sound comes in handy a lot. I've used this drum set on a ton of different types of recordings, a lot of film stuff, some big band stuff, funk stuff, you know, some singer-songwriter stuff. If you watch Cobra Kai, this is the drum set I used on the season finale. In terms of sound, they just, they record really well. I mean, they're called recording customs, but for that specific sound where the toms are just super punchy, the bass drum's very punchy and it has a lot of low end to it as well. Peter actually, he told me this was the mightiest 20 inch bass drum he's ever played. I gotta come clean, this isn't an 80s recording custom. I know I ruined the entire video, or at least three quarters of it, because actually the 12 inch is from the 80s. David, the original owner, actually looked up all the serial numbers, so the 14, 16, and 22 were made in 2011, and the 12 inch was made in 1987. Sonically, I guarantee that the newer kits still sound good. They're both made of birch, but they're sourced from different locations, so yes, it's the same species, but no, it's not the same wood, if that makes sense. So just like in my last video where I compared a reissue superstar to a vintage superstar, yes, both kits sound good, but the newer kits definitely lack that mojo and mysticism that the vintage kits have. So let's finally hear this thing. If you just found yourself saying, wow, I've never heard Dave play like that before, that's because you never have. But thanks to jpbouvetmethod.com, the sponsor of this video, I was able to take a deep dive into the stuff I was just playing. The past few months, I've been studying the right, left, left kick course, and right, left, left kick is a fill I've played a billion times, but it's been just that, right, left, left kick. But also, you might have heard me expand on it a little bit in recent videos, thanks to what I learned from JP. And what you just heard me play on this kit is the culmination of everything in one solo, and don't get me wrong, there's still a lot that I haven't mastered and a lot that I still need to work on, but on top of giving me endless fill ideas, this really helped me better understand how to improv and open me up to playing melodies, which is something I've been scared of and never really worked on before. But like 95% of the stuff I just played was not planned at all and just flowed out of me. And that's JP's whole thing, teaching drummers how to improvise and teaching them the modern language of contemporary drumming and helping you better your own creativity on the drums. So good news for you if you're trying to learn how to improvise or just better understand the contemporary styles of drumming. If you follow the link in the description and use promo code RDavidR, you'll get 50% off your first month. Everything is straight to the point, no edutainment kind of stuff, just straight up teaching at a university level that's easy to follow and easy to understand. So far, I can get behind the hype of the recording customs, even though that hype kind of died off in like the early 2000s. But I mean, right now, the way this kit is tuned, it's low and punchy and resonant at the same time, which is kind of like the default skin drum sound. But also, I think I'm starting to catch on to what gives the recording custom that extra edge over any other kit. Tim talked about it some, and Jake talked about it some, but did you catch what they said? So I'm actually a huge Yamaha recording custom fan. I've had mine since I was 18. This is a mid 1980s Yamaha recording custom. And I actually just reset it up in the studio because I've had this green sparkle Ludwig. And here's the thing about recording customs. I love Luddies. They sound huge, like the classic Ludwig sound. 
but they are not near as versatile as this drum set. This was my main horse for years and years. And what I love about it is I could play a reggae gig, I could play uh, a jazz gig, I could play a rock gig, I could play just about anything and I could get these in the tuning range that they sounded good and acceptable. You want to do the low, beefy Steve Gadd sound from the 80s and early 90s, these do that really well. You want to do a pitched up, kind of like we have them now, with like double ply heads on them. Sounds great for that clear articulate sound. I also have two recording custom snares here. And here, this does the low boy thing like super well. Um, and then here you can tell we have a ton of other snare drums, but the thing about them all is they're not near as versatile. If you said, hey, what's your most versatile kit? Every time it's gonna be recording custom. Versatility. On top of everything else about this kit, I feel like the versatility of it is the icing on the cake that really gave the Recording Customs the legacy that they built. So I guess that makes the Recording Custom a jack of all tones. 